Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be going through the first two steps I take when beginning to process my astrophotography photos using PixInsight. The first is the image selection using the Blink Process tool here, and the second is stacking all of my data using the Weighted Batch Pre-Processing script. I made a video previously on my entire PixInsight and Photoshop workflow, which did end up being pretty long. So what I'm going to try to do is just split it up into individual sections so I can go through step by step and do a tutorial for you guys, make a playlist so that way you can go to wherever you need instead of having to sift through an entire long video to find one or two parts that might pertain to you. So this is going to be the beginning of that series and I'm going to be going through and processing the Eastern Veil Nebula from start to finish beginning in this video. For those of you who don't know, my name is Zach from RenoAstro.com and I am an amateur astrophotographer based out of Northern Nevada. So first, let's go ahead and open the Blink module. We're going to want to go up to the process on the toolbar here, go to all processes and then Blink right there. It's going to open this module right here. Now we'll want to go in and click on this add image files icon at the bottom. So you're going to want to navigate to wherever you have your raw data saved at. I have mine saved on an external one terabyte drive, which I already have open right here. So whenever you navigate to your data, just go ahead and select all of your sub exposures. Once you have all of your subs loaded into the Blink module, you'll want to go ahead and just click on this play animation icon. It's going to do a quick animation going one by one through all of your subs. This is a really easy way for us to see if there's any outliers, if there's any issues in guiding, some really heavy star trails, or here you can see at the end of this animation, I actually started imaging into the daylight. So those last few subs that I got are unusable. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom. I'm going to find where we started to see that light really first start to trickle in. Right about here, I start to see that transition. This sub looks a little bit brighter. Yeah, it starts to progressively get brighter and brighter from there. So I know everything after here, I'm just going to be deselecting. Go one by one on each of them. And once you have the ones deselected, you can just highlight and just close those selected images. If there's any easy outliers, that little play animation is going to be the one you'll want to use to identify those. So now we're going to scroll back up to the top. We'll do it one more time. See if there was any really bad satellites or maybe an airplane. But these all look pretty good to me. So to go a little bit deeper, I'm going to go ahead and select or zoom into... We'll go right about there. That's a pretty good star field right there. So now we can go one by one and check individually these subs to see how the stars look in each. If there's any guiding issues, it'll be easier to see kind of flipping back and forth. Like right here, I'm seeing right in those little stars. Yeah, there was, there was something going on in that sub. So I'm going to deselect that one, get rid of it, and I'm going to be going one by one through all of these just to make sure that I'm happy with the way the stars look in all of them. All right, that doesn't look too bad to me. So we're going to go ahead and stop that, and I'm happy with what I've selected here. So once you're happy with what you select through the Blink module, you'll just click inside, hit that Control A, so we select all of our sub-exposures that we've selected, and just hit this little save icon. So we're going to copy those to a different destination. I have everything in a separate drive here, so we're going to go to the Eastern Veil Nebula. I'll go ahead and make a new folder for this video. And I did use a filter for this, a dual band filter. So I'm just going to name it HA03 selected. And I'll just throw them and save them into that folder. All right. So once you've selected the sub exposures that you're happy with and you've saved them to a different destination, you can go ahead and just click on that close images and we are done with Blink. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the second step of the process now, and that is going to be image stacking. 
So we're going to go up to this top toolbar under script. We're going to go to batch processing and then weighted batch pre-processing at the bottom there. I'm going to go ahead and just make it a little bit bigger for you guys. Once that loads up, we're now able to select all of the files that we're going to want, including our calibration files. We'll go ahead and first start with the lights. We will navigate to where we saved those files. So for me, it's going to be under my folder on my dedicated astronomy drive. Go to Nebulae, Eastern Veil, and here are all of those sub exposures that we just selected using the blink tool. Control A and open. Looks like we have 64 total that we selected. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now let's go ahead and add all of our calibration files. So you can add your flats in, your darks, and your biases if you took those. I have flats, so I'm going to navigate to where I have my flats saved, which is also on my astronomy drive. I have right here 15 normal flats, and I also took some dark flats for this set, so I will add those dark flats into my bias section here. And you can see I have these all named Eastern Veil dark flats, and I've got 15 of those. So got the dark flats, and now I will add my darks. I have a cooled camera, so I have a little bit of control on the temperature of my sensor. So I do have a darks library that I update every few months or so. I believe this was at negative 20 degrees at 180 second exposures. So I'll add my five darks into there. Now we can navigate back up to the calibration tab up here, and we'll be able to see all of the frames that we've put in, including our calibration frames. Let's go ahead and start with our lights here to make sure that these are configured properly. Click on your lights, and if you're using a color camera like I am, this CFA settings is going to need to be adjusted. So make sure that you have this box checked for CFA images. I do know my mosaic pattern or Bayer pattern. Mine is RGGB. If you don't know it, you should be able to just leave it at auto and it'll be able to figure it out via the FITS files from your sub exposures. So I have CFA images and RGGB selected. I always like to hit that apply to all light frames just to be safe. And you'll want to do the same thing for your flats frames here as well. So there's a CFA images that apply to all flats. So now you can see these are linked with our flats, whereas they were not before. So if you're using dark flats like I am, where you put it in the biases, as long as you have this little dark check mark under calibration settings and on auto, the pre-processing script should be able to automatically pick out that it goes with these flats here. So you can see when I click on these flats, this bias frame section is highlighted green, meaning that these two are linked. If we click back onto our lights, we can see that we have the flat frames in green and the dark frames in green. Again, meaning that those two are linked and those calibration frames should be processed correctly in the final product. Before I run this script, I always like to make sure that under the preset section here, I like to choose the maximum quality with no compromises. So I always just make sure that I select that before I run this. And I also do purge my cache before I run as well. Now mine's already at zero, so I have nothing to purge. But if you have anything there, it will build up over time. So just make sure to purge that every so often. Now before we run this script, let's go ahead and click on this show calibration diagram as we have our lights selected here. And we see that our 180 second lights are going to be calibrated with our master dark and master flat. The master dark is going to be subtracted from the lights and the master flat will be divided. So we should be able to get rid of a lot of the vignetting that some optics will leave on the image, as well as dust spots and other debris that might be on the lens or the camera. And at the end of it, we should have our calibrated lights. So this looks correct to me. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. We can also do the same with our flat here. So if you click on your flat, show calibration diagram, we see that we have our flats being calibrated by our biases. And those are just our dark flats that I had input in there. That's gonna get rid of any hot pixels that we have, so that way they don't show up in our final product. So this looks good to me as well. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that, select my light frames one more time. I'm gonna leave everything else at default. I don't wanna mess with any of the settings here. Generally, it's a pretty good outcome. So now we're gonna go ahead and run this script. Before you do end up hitting continue, it will tell you exactly how much disk space availability you're gonna need on the drive that you have this processing on. So on my astronomy drive, I have 145 gigabytes available. This is going to take a total of 16.3 it looks like. So I got plenty of space, I'll just go ahead and hit continue. So this potentially can take a while depending on the type of system that you have. 
I'm gonna go ahead and let this do its thing and I will see you guys at the end when it's done. All right, and looks like we're all finished here with the script execution. Everything looked like it was a success with the exception of the astrometric solution at the end. If you get this fail at the end for the astrometric solution, don't worry too much about it. I'm gonna be going over this in a future video, but as long as everything else was a success, we are good to go here, so go ahead and click on done. You can click on done there as well. All right, so it's gonna bring us back to our pre-processing script. We are all finished with this, so go ahead and click on that exit at the bottom right. And now let's go ahead and open our file. So go to the top left, click on file and open. I have my directory set to the processing folder for my astronomy drive. I'm gonna go ahead and go to master, which is where they typically all go. And the naming scheme can be a little confusing, but it's gonna be the most recent one that you did. So here, 12.44 p.m., that's gonna be the one. So you can see here, it actually opened up three different windows. So let's see what these are. If you click on this auto stretch button on the top right, looks like this processed out some of the satellite trails we got. This one looks like it's some background noise, don't need that. And this one with what appear to be a few stars in the background, this is going to be our image. And that's all there is to doing your pre-processing. So this is gonna be the image that I work with in future videos here. My next one is gonna be all around background extraction and color calibration. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this was at least a little bit useful to you. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm going to be breaking up this tutorial and my workflow into a bunch of separate videos so that way you guys don't have to sift through a really long workflow video and you can just go to where you need to go. So we'll finish up with the Eastern Veil in future videos, but until then, hope you guys got some clear skies. Thank you for watching.